Now let's briefly talk about how does machine learning or deep learning work. A neural network is basically a parameterized function parameterized by its weights. We have our input x, which can be a picture of maybe someone is smiling and we want to identify the mood of that person. It may be a data row and we want to classify the data as 0 or 1 or anything like that. Now, this input x is fed to a neural network model, your first layer, and it goes through data transformation. So your input row may convert into maybe a different um, array, 2D array, or something else. Your input picture that you set, submit may become an input volume and convert to something else. It goes through some data transformation. In the second layer, again, it goes through further data transformation. And then what decides these transformations is these weights that you have in the, in the model. So this weight somehow maybe multiply or uh, do something to the input data to produce these transformed representations of your input. Same thing happens in the subsequent layer. Whatever comes out of the previous layer, you multiply or you add or do something with these layers with these weight parameters, and then you get the next output. The goal is to find the right values for these weights. That is, what should be the weights, these values? So when we say weights, these are simply numbers, right? So these are simply numbers. Numbers here, numbers here. So what should be these numbers such that when these numbers multiply my input or add to my input, I will get a representation, an output, that will finally lead me either to detect mood in this picture or in this case of data row with values to identify whether the data contains a zero or one. Now, from these data representations that we have, what we do is well, we have these weights, we multiply the inputs, and then we obtain predictions. These we call y dash, that is the prediction. So if this was input x, we say that these predictions are y, y dash. Now, we also have the true target. So from the data that we created, say for example, here is a picture with, a, with some mood output, this actual mood becomes your y, and your input becomes your x, and the predictions from your model become y dash. Now, during the process of training, what we can do is check the difference between your prediction y and the true target y. So your y dash, that is your prediction, often also referred to as p, and your y tells us how bad our prediction is or how good our prediction is compared to the ground truth. So here in this case, if the mood was happy, right, and if the code for happy was, let's say, 9, and if your model predicts an output of, let's say, 8, then we know that it's close to 9. Your prediction 8 is close to 9, but it's not exactly the output. So then we calculate something called loss, and your loss function simply calculates the difference between your prediction and your true and gives you a loss score. Now this loss function measures the quality of the network's output. If this prediction was already 9, then the loss would be 0. Usually a very low loss means that the model is doing pretty good. And now finally, the final piece is something known as the optimizer. What the optimizer does is takes your loss score and gives a signal back to your model to say, hey, your output was 8, but the correct output was 9. You're, you're off or you're lower by 1. So can you change these weights, adjust these weights, such that next time when the same output come, same input comes in, you multiply such that you can either get 8.8 .8 or 8.9 or something closer to 9. And this loss score is used as a feedback signal to update the weights. And this optimizer is actually the heart of this algorithm. It is the heart of the algorithm that takes the loss score and updates the weights so that in the next round, the weights are more relevant to get a more accurate estimate, y dash, or a better y dash next time. 
So this is the principle of how machine learning or deep learning works. So you have the, in summary, you have this input, it goes to various layers of data transformations decided by the weights. And then after these transformations, you make some predictions Y or predictions P. We calculate the error between your P and the true ground truth, that is whatever the actual output should be uh, by using a loss function. And then this gives us the loss score. And then the optimizer takes this loss score and updates the weights such that the next time our predictions are slightly better than how they were in the previous round. And this repetition, this cycle, usually known as one cycle, is known as one batch or one epoch, one epoch or one batch, um, is repeated again and again repeatedly so that eventually our predictions are very close to the ground truth Y. One common question that people often get asked about deep learning is why deep learning and in particular why now? Why wasn't deep learning there maybe years ago and why is it the right time that deep learning became popular? Now the reason why people ask this is because of two key things. One of the, the some of the like two key reasons, one big reason is that the two key ideas of deep learning for computer vision, for example, the convolutional neural networks and the back propagation algorithm, this is the optimizer that actually updates the weights, they were already well understood in 1989. So why didn't deep learning become popular then or why couldn't we do deep learning at that time? Also, the short-term memory um, uh, algorithm, the long short-term memory algorithm, LSTMs, which is fundamental to deep learning for time series data, was already developed in 1997 and has it has barely changed uh, since then. So why did deep learning only take off after 2012? What changed in these two decades that it didn't, uh, it wasn't popular then or it didn't kick off at the time and only now? The answer to this question is that um, is, is hardwares, data sets, and algorithmic advances. So these three key technical forces are the driving advances in machine learning, which has led us to deep learning. Within hardware, we now have GPUs, which we didn't have in 80s or 90s, um, or even early 2000s, and that's what we have now, and that's why deep learning can do that. Deep learning became popular, and it can do what it can do now. Also, back then, we did not have large data sets and benchmarks. For example, the ImageNet data set was not at the time. Data, databases like Kaggle were not at the time. So this also, uh, the lack of enough data also was the reason why deep learning could not, could not kick off at that time. Another um, big area of advancements is algorithmic advances. We, we talked about uh, hidden layers and shallow and deep learning models. So if a model has more than simply two hidden layers, earlier we couldn't do any training, so no training. The training would be very, very ineffective. But now we have come up with many algorithmic advances such that we can weight initialize better, we have better activation functions, we understand them more, we have better optimization schemes such as adaptive learning rates Atom and RMS Prop, which enable us to design really deep neural networks such that we can train a very deep neural network without any problem. So these three advances, hardware, data sets and benchmarks and algorithmic advances are the reasons why deep learning took off only very recently.